using his class year on the name tag as an excuse, I feigned interest in a chat and slid in next to him at the front of the buffet line, skipping ahead of scores of other hungry reunion revelers. I needed something in my gut other than the alcohol I'd been consuming all afternoon with my classmates. He wasn't wearing the requisite blazer, hair pulled back in a ponytail. Turned out he was a pretty interesting guy. Had done a lot in the 40 years between then and now. And at some point in our long conversation, too soon for me to weigh the consequences, he asked, and I said yes. I was going to Burning Man. <laughs> I'll admit to being a little out of my mind. I just discovered the man I had been with for the last nine years was involved with another woman, and I was completely blown apart. What better way to forget than to go to the desert for a week with a man I'd only known for an hour? <laughs> he was a dedicated burner, nine trips. He knew how much food and water we'd need, how to get my bike on a truck heading west, the necessity of goggles and mask for the desert winds that would blow sand into the eyes and lungs of the unprepared, how nothing could be bought but ice and coffee. However, I could barter for anything else with the wampum of my choosing. And by the way, we'd be connected with a polyamorous camp for the cooking facilities. <laughs> Later, I questioned the wisdom of the trip, but the thought passed quickly. I needed an adventure. Fast forward to Reno, where we bought provisions and drove out to the desert. We pitched our tents within our assigned radius and greeted our fellow campmates who claimed the space around us. Our immediate neighbor was a 300-pound woman who stripped off all her clothes to pitch her tent. <laughs> Rear view on full display as she bent to stake the corners. The cast of characters was something out of a Fellini movie, including a one-armed, blue-haired fellow with piercings everywhere. And I mean everywhere. A separate structure was constructed for polyamorous activity. I'll admit I never explored that real estate. However, over those eight days, I listened to jazz performed by musically gifted burners, including a singer dressed in a Scooby-Doo costume <laughs> and a naked sax player wearing only sneakers. I played on a solitary drum kit set out on the distant boundary, which is a good thing since drumming is a lot harder than it looks joined a massive gathering allegedly mimicking the defensive sounds uttered by various types of primates, hula hooped at 3 a.m., made out with a guy I had met playing music of Dar Williams, windsurfed on a board that pivoted while pinned to the desert floor, and I danced until I fell down. I wept as I scrawled messages on the walls of the temple, a three-story lotus-shaped structure made from the intricately patterned remains of plywood from which jigsaw puzzle pieces were cut. On the final evening, it was torched, and despite my concerns of the carbon footprint, I truly believed that my messages had been sent and received. It was as close to a religious experience as I had ever had. That year, the festival theme was evolution. Surprisingly, I only recognized the obvious metaphor in hindsight, but those desert winds had blown off the shutters and rearranged the furniture with cathartic effect, and I walked out of the desert open to whatever might blow my way. 